Hi, I'm Steven. Welcome to my channel. Initially, I was only looking for a 40 milliliter lens. As I know, the Minota, Konica, they all have M mount 40 mm lens. But uh, when I searched online, I was shocked. The price. Nearly all M mount lenses, like uh, Leica, they skyrocketed in price. Then I remember an article I read about uh, 10 years ago on the internet called Seven Swords, which introduced seven inexpensive Japanese fixed lens rangefinder cameras, almost all of which used lenses around 40mm. Of that seven cameras, the Olympus have three, the 35SP, 35RD, and the 35RC. I never used them, so I chose the bigger one, the largest 35SP. So I bought this 35SP on Japan's Melukali for uh, 17,000 yen, about 126 bucks. The camera is in less than ideal conditions, but I still like it after I using it for a while. I want to keep using it, so I bought another one on Yahoo Auction, a lucky price, just uh, 15,000 yen, uh, about uh, 111 bucks. After using it for a few months, I still really like this compact rangefinder camera. So in this episode, let's talk this Olympus 35SP, a fixed lens rangefinder camera. I want to start with its disadvantages, because if you can accept them, then it will be the most valuable rangefinder camera ever. So these advantages of Olympus 35SP. Number one, the shutter button has a long stroke, and you have to press it deeply to release the shutter. This is the main disadvantage in my opinion, as it has a longer travel distance compared to all camera I have used. Obviously, it's not advantageous for catching fleeting moment. Pressing the shutter button too hard can easily cause camera shake. You must need time to use to it. Number two, the shutter sound is not pleasant. Look this. Zing, zing. It has that tense spring sound, not smooth. Number three, the focus ring struck distance a little bit shorter. Personally, I like a little bit longer focus struck distance. Uh, it will be better, I think. We got this lever on focus ring. Uh, the focusing is quite easy, but uh, it's not as smooth as the Leica lenses, but just okay. Number four, it feels like a cheap box. Its build quality cannot be compared to the Nikon of that era. It also cannot compare to the Olympus' own Pan FT half frame camera, which is noticeable more solid build. Someone may say the unchangeable, the fixed lens is also a comms, but I, I don't think so. At least for me, I don't often change the lens. So if you can accept this, this advantage, then you should have a 35SP. Its excellent lens quality is not inferior to Leica even in comparison. The vintage lenses seem to be valued and the price based on the number of glass lens elements they have. Olympus also seem to distinguish its lens by the number of elements, with the prefix letters on the Zico lenses indicating the element count. C for 3, 
D for 4, E for 5, and uh, F for 6, G for 7, and H for 8. These 35 SP lens are 42 milliliter F1.7 GZ lens with seven elements in five groups. It's renowned for its excellent image quality and is a major reason why I choose it. Very sharp even wide open and uh, no distortion. It's sharper than the most SLR lenses and its ability to express details is also its biggest highlight. A little bit low contrast with very beautiful tones. The 35 SP was a powerhouse when it was introduced in 1969 with an automatic exposure function that could be achieved by setting both the aperture and the shutter speed to 8. The camera didn't have aperture priority or shutter priority modes and the auto exposure function is only available in full auto mode. The aperture range stops down to f16 manually or down to f22 in auto mode. It's a fully mechanical camera with a full program auto exposure capabilities. This means that even without a battery, the camera still functions normally just without a metering and uh, auto mode. It's similar to Nikon FM3A, which also has a mechanical shutter with an uh, automatic exposure function. It has an iris shutter with a range from B 1 second to 1 500 second. The shutter speed can slow down to 1 second only 35 SP in that uh, 7 rangefinder cameras. The iris shutter means any shutter speed can support flash sync. The CDS metering of the 35 SP is reliable and uh, quite uh, accurate. However, it's important to know that the metering doesn't measure the light passing through the lens, but rather meters next to the viewfinder window. So don't forget to take off the lens cap when you take the shot. And if you're using some filter uh, like this, you will need to compensate for exposure or adjust the ISO setting yourself to get the correct exposure. The 35 SP's metering is a cent weight average metering in normal. On the top of the viewfinder, you will see a row of EV value numbers with a black point indicating the EV value of the metering result. Then rotate the aperture or shuttering to the same number displayed in this small window, indicating that it is set to the same metering result. The ISO setting is only from ISO 25 to ISO 800, not as wide as modern cameras metering range. The metering always on it doesn't have a power off function. Some people said the, the metering will stop working if you place the camera in a dark bag, but I'm not sure about that. So it's still recommended to remove the battery if it's not for use for a long time. About the battery, the 35 SP runs on a Mercury PX625 or PX13 cell, but these are all discontinued. You can use the WIN EPX625 or use some adapter with zinc air herring at cell. My 35 SP is using this Golden Power 625G. It's a 1.5 volt uh, battery, but the metering results are still quite uh, accurate. <laughs> I don't know why. The SP in uh, 35 SP means spot meter, which was totally like black magic in 1969. When you press this spot button, spot meter working. The yellow focusing spot in the viewfinder is the spot metering range. Spot meter just at push of a button. It's so, so great. Once you get used to the spot metering method on the 35 SP, you may not able to tolerate any other camera's spot metering. This spot metering usage is the most convenient of all camera I have seen.
Although maybe its accuracy is not as good as the modern cameras, but it's accurate enough for shooting film. When you're using automatic exposure mode, press the shutter halfway and holding it can lock the exposure. And the spot metering can also be done this way. Lock it, compose the shot, and then press the shutter button. This was 1980s, many advanced SLR cameras began to have this feature. Maybe this is the reason that a shutter button be designed has a long stroke. Olympus was amazing. The viewfinder on the 35SP is very bright and uh, with high contrast. The magnification is 0.7, which is very close to my Leica M6. Viewfinder has a slightly color cast, and the viewfinder on my two 35SP is a little bit different. One is slightly blue and the other one is slightly magenta but they are both bright. They brighter than the Leica M6's viewfinder, but Leica does not have any color cost. It doesn't have parallax correction feature like the Leica. When the focus distance is within 1.5 meter, you need to refer the marks that compensate for parallax on the top and the left edges of the viewfinder frame. Sometimes I use a lens hood like this. It's not the original 35s. Actually, it's the, it is the Pontex. It will obscure part of the frame. Although the 35SP is the largest in Japanese fixed lens rangefinder cameras, but still uh, slightly smaller than the Leica M6, but much lighter in weight, is only 600 grams weight. It's light enough to carry in your bag. You almost even don't feel its weight. Uh, now the Leica M6 with a Simicron 35 lens costs at least 50 times more than 35 SP, I think. However, the 35 SP delivers comparable image quality to the Leica and even has an advantage with its auto exposure mode. It is also much lighter and uh, easy to use. And uh, uh, recently, I feel the 35mm lens uh, more suitable for documentary style perspective, which can appear a little bit serious. 40mm lens is a perfect normal and a relaxed daily perspective. It's perfect for everyday shooting. Someone said, if you want a great picture, nothing beats the 35SP. If you want to brag about your great pictures, shoot a 35SP. If you want to brag your fancy camera, get a Leica. But I don't agree with this. If we follow this logic, there would not have been so many top-level camera in the film era. For example, the Nikon FM2 produce the same result as the Nikon F3 when using a same lens. So why pay three times more price for the F3? We cannot only look at the result, especially when it comes to photography. The hand feel and the shooting experience of the 35SP is not as smooth as the Leica M6, which provides a very smooth and pleasure experience when shooting continuously in a few days. 
the Olympus 35SP is an excellent option for those who love rangefinder camera and uh, can afford one with superb 7-element high-speed lens without going bankrupt. Or it can be a backup camera in your bag. For just over 100 bucks, you can own a such amazing rangefinder camera, which is meaningful today. We love shooting film and we don't want it to become an expensive and luxurious hobby. This is also the reason why I started this video series, shooting film on a budget. Okay, thanks for watching. See you.